Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have 9 to the power of x is equal to 18. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 9 to the power of x is equal to log 18. Now, an important property of logarithms is that, let's say we have something in the form log a to the power of b. We can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this is going to actually equal b times log a. So I'm going to use this property on log 9 to the power of x. So we can think of 9 as a and x as b. So I'm going to move our x here to the front of the logarithm. So this is going to equal x times log a. So now I have x times log a is equal to Sorry, it's not a, it's 9. So I have x times log 9 is equal to log 18. Now we want to isolate x, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and divide log 9 on both sides. So now I have x is equal to, because these two cancel out, log 18 over log 9. Now 18 is equal to 9 times 2. So I'm going to rewrite log 18 as log 9 times 2. And now we're dividing this by log 9. So now if I have, if I have a logarithm in the form log a times b, this is actually equal to log a plus log b because remember if you guys already didn't know when you're adding logarithms you're technically just multiplying the two numbers in front of the logarithms so now log not nine times two this is going to equal log nine plus log two so now i have log nine plus log two divided by log 9 and now this is the same thing as log 9 over log 9 plus log 2 over log 9 all I simply did was I divided this into two parts because remember, if you add these again, you'll simply get log 9 plus log 2 over log 9. So now, log 9 to over log 9, these two would cancel out. So this is the same thing as 1. So I have 1 plus log 2 over log 9. Now, log 9, well, 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So now if I replace 3 squared for 9, I get x is equal to 1 plus log 2 over log 3 squared. Now remember, property of logarithms, that states that if we have something in the form log a to the power of b, we can move our exponent b to the front of the logarithm, so this would equal b times log a. So log 3 squared that is going to equal, we move the 2 to the front of the logarithm, so we will have 2 times log 3. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus log 2 over log, or sorry, 2 log 3. Now log 2. This is equal to approximately 0 
and log three. This is equal to approximately 0 0.4771. So now if I go ahead and substitute in log two and log three into our original equation, I get x is equal to one plus now log two is equal to 0 0.301. So I have 0 0.301 over two times log three. Log three is equal to 0 0.4771. So I have two times 0 0.4771. So now I have x is equal to one plus 0 0.301 over two times 0 0.4771. Now let's simplify this. 2 times 0 0.4771. This is equal to 0 0.9542. So I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.301 over 0 0.9542. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify 0 0.301 over 0 0.9542. So this is equal to 0 0.3154. So one plus 0 0.3514 is simply 1.3154. So x is equal to 1.3154. And now I'm going to give you guys a similar problem, but which is much easier and it doesn't require any logarithms. So our original problem was 9 to the power of x is equal to 18. Now I'm going to give you guys 9 to the power of x is equal to 27. So I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video and try to solve this problem. All right, so I'm assuming you guys pause the video and try to solve the problem. So we have 9 to the power of x equals 27. And 9, this is the same thing as 3 squared. So 9 to the power of x, this is going to equal 3 squared to the power of x, which is equal to 27. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x, this will equal 3 to the power of 2 times x. 2 times x is simply 2x. So I have 3 to the power of 2x is equal to 27. Now 27, this is the same thing as 3 to the power of 3. So I have 3 to the power of 2x is equal to 3 to the power of 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is simply equal to n. Because if both the bases are the same, that means both the exponents are the same as well. So I have 3 to the power of 2x equals 3 to the power of 3. And our exponents are 2x and 3. So I'll set them equal to each other. 2x is equal to 3. Now if I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out. So I get x is equal to 3 over 2. So this is our answer. And I can even go ahead and plug this in for x and see if it's right. So check. We have 9 to the power of x is equal to 27. x is 3 over 2, so we have 9 to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 27. Now I can rewrite this as 9 to the power of 3 square root of that, which is equal to 27. Now 9 to the power of 3, well that's 9 times 9 times 9. 9 times 9 is 81, so 81 times 9, which is equal to 729. So now I have the square root of 729 is equal to 27. And the square root of 729 is 27. So if 27 is equal to 27 because this is right, our solution is right. All right, so in this system of equations, I have x squared minus y squared is equal to 28, 
and x times y equals 48. So I'm given two equations. Let's just say that this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So what I want to do is find the value of x plus y. So what is the value of x plus y? And finding this is fairly simple when we find the value of x and the value of y. So to start, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my second equation here. So equation 2 is x times y equals 48. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for one variable in relation to the other. So it doesn't matter which one, but for this case, I'm going to solve for y. And to solve for y, I have to isolate it, meaning I have to get rid of this x by dividing both sides by x. So I get y is equal to 48 over x. Now, using this equation, I can plug this back in to equation 1. So equation 1 is x squared minus y squared is equal to 28. Now here we got y is equal to 48 over x. So if I plug this in for y, I get x squared minus 48 over x squared is equal to 28. Now I can substitute the two. So I get x squared minus 48 squared over x squared is equal to 28. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. So now, for my left-hand side, I have to distribute the x squared. x squared times x squared is x squared squared, or x squared to the power of 2. Now, I have this minus 48 squared over x squared times x squared. These two x squared cancel out, so I just get 48 squared. And now this is equal to 28x squared. Now I'm going to subtract 28x squared on both sides. So I get x squared to the power of 2 minus 28x squared minus 48 squared is equal to 0. Now I'm going to set u equal to x squared. So I get u squared minus 28u minus 48 squared is equal to 0. And now I can solve this by completing the square. So I'm going to add 48 squared back. And Now I get u squared minus 28u is equal to 48 squared. Now I'm going to add this, so negative 28, or we can say just positive 28. I'm going to add this divided by 2 squared on both sides. And if you, don't, if you guys don't know what completing the square is, you have to go watch a video on it. So I add this on both sides. I get 28 over 2 squared on both sides. And 28 over 2 is 14, so I get u squared minus 28u plus 14 squared, which is equal to 48 squared plus, again, 14 squared. And now the reason I did this, the reason I used completing the square, was because now I can factor this out. This turns into u minus 14 squared which is equal to 48 squared, I'm going to rewrite as 50 minus 2 squared, and 14 squared, I'm going to rewrite as 10 plus 4 squared. Now from here, u minus 14 squared is equal to 2500 minus 200 plus 4, plus 100 
plus 80 plus 16. And now if we add these up, we get u minus 14 squared is equal to Twenty five hundred. And if we take the square root on both sides, we get u minus 14 is equal to positive or negative 50. So we get two equations. Now we get u minus 14 is equal to positive 50 and u minus 14 is equal to negative 50. So u minus 14 is equal to positive 50. I get u is equal to 64. And u minus 14 is equal to negative 50. I get u is equal to negative 36. Now, remember how we let u equal x squared. So this means that x squared is equal to 64 and x squared is equal to negative 36. Well, we can't have a number squared equal to a negative number. So this is wrong, meaning that x squared equals 64 is my only proper equation, and if I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to positive or negative 8. So these are my two solutions to this problem. And I know that I said this wasn't work, but there actually is a way we can use this to find solutions, not real solutions, but imaginary solutions. So to do that, what I'm going to do is x squared is equal to negative 36. If I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to square root of negative 36. And the square root of negative 36 is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. Now, the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i, so I get x is equal to the square root of 36 i. And the square root of 36 is the same thing as positive or negative 6. So I get x is equal to positive or negative 6i. So these are another two solutions. And these aren't real solutions, but these are imaginary solutions, which still count as solutions to this problem. So my four solutions are x equals 8, x equals negative 8, x is equal to 6i, and x is equal to negative 6i.